Wait, hang on a second. Apparently there's a child in here. David Diaz is a child who's currently poor, uneducated, and enjoying time in the tavern. Hang on a second. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we are here in Tropico 6. But today we're doing something very special. We're asking, what if you'd never revolt against the crown? Now, this game has an interesting age-based feature where you'll start the game out as a colony in the Caribbean somewhere, working underneath Her Majesty the Queen. From there, your empire will expand and you'll complete various missions, with the aim in mind to build up enough revolutionary support to overthrow those pesky monarchists and finally take control of yourself. However, we're not going to do that. We are not going to do that at all. We're going to stay in the good old-fashioned colonial times, stay loyal and true to the Queen. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to prep for this video. Make sure you're sat back, you're relaxed, you've got your Union Jack flag whipped out, you've got a nice cup of tea sat in front of you, and that you've liked the video. Also, so why not subscribe as well? Mm, that would be jazzy. So we're going to start with a new game, and we're going to go for a sandbox because it's majestic. And naturally, we have to go for this level here called Acts of God. It's got a great big bloody volcano in the middle of it. Who wouldn't want to play on that monstrosity? Oh, here we have it. It's Tropico. Oh my goodness. It's good to be back in this game. I've played Tropico 3, 4, 5, and now here we are at 6. It's been a wild ride. So, how does this game work? Quite simple. You have your people, and then you just want to persecute them to the point where they just want to leave your island. That's how you run a successful company. Oh wait, no, this isn't a company. Good lord. This isn't the high quality organ harvesting co. No, 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 no. Trust me, this isn't a guise for them or a early representation of them. This is quite simply El Presidente Spiff looking after his majestic people whilst living in this wonderful palace here. Yes, I custom designed it myself and it is bloody incredible. Over here we've got the gazebo for any dignitaries that want to turn up. Not that anyone would. Nobody likes El Presidente. Now, we want to quite simply expand and make sure that we have enough food to export on this island. So I'm thinking, let's try and build some kind of nice plantations. What about bananas? Nope. Pineapples? Oh, no. Sugar? Oh, God, no. Cocoa? Oh, no. Tobacco? No. Coffee? No. Cotton? No. And rubber? No. Great. So we've landed an island where we can only produce pineapples and corn. Great. Okay, well, we'll produce some bloody pineapples then. We're also probably going to want a logging camp that'll drive the eco people insane. But, you know, come on. It's a colonial era. Who cares about trees? Of course, one of the major issues you have to face as El Presidente is that there's tons of slums everywhere. That's right. People don't have houses, so they just decide they want to sit on the road. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Anyway, we need to demolish all of these houses to build space for my majestic highway. Did we need it? No. The fire stopped. Wait, I just demolished a fire using roads? <gasps> Why didn't they do this with the Great Fire of London? Could have saved so many lives. Technically, we face quite a few issues in that we are trapped on this one island. It's the colonial era, so you can't build bridges to get to a different island. But I've managed to find a way to circumnavigate that. And because we can circumnavigate it, we are able to survive in this harsh, harsh world. So let's take a look at some trade deals. We want to try and export a good, basically, to the crown. Now, we don't really have too many options. Mostly sugar, rum, rubber, and gold. And guess what? We don't produce any of them. Them. All of the options you've given us, Crown, we can't produce, but nonetheless, I appreciate your recommendation that we should produce them. Also, we've got sharks swimming around in the water, so it's going to be a little unsafe to send little fishermen out, but um, don't worry, we're going to do that anyway. Fisherman's Wharf, away you go. Oh, and also, we're going to immediately set up our gold production, trust me. For that, we're going to need a Teamsters port built right here, and then we're also going to want a landing to go alongside it. And there we go, that should be good. Now we just need to get our construction underway, which is of course handled by the construction office. What's their current work mode? Better safe than sorry. Excuse me, ignore safety regulations. Who cares if there's a 10% risk of death? And here come our teamsters who are transporting loads and loads of resources from the lumber camp. Except they're not because apparently the lumber camp haven't got workers. But anyway, a new boat has arrived from luckily the old world and with them they've brought some new colonists and also they've exported some of our goods for extra money. So mines are great, but our land is is actually completely useless for mines. However, over here, we've got gold. Who cares if it's at the foot of a deadly volcano? We've got gold. So we're going to place down a lovely little gold mine. There we go. Gold mine complete. And suddenly some works are going to start going over here because guess what? Working in a deadly gold mine beneath a volcano, we're going to give you an extra bit of pay. Yep, $7. Congratulations. You get paid slightly less than the construction workers, a lot less than the Teamsters, and in fact you actually get paid the same amount as a farmer. 
and the revolutionaries on the island, those pesky, pesky revolutionaries who we don't want to listen to, have proposed a mission for us. Basically, they want us to build a pirate cove. In return, we can get some wonderful gifts from them. So, you know what? For the time being, it's actually worth it. And the reason why is that a pirate cove allows us to borrow some national landmarks. Yeah. I'm not going to go into any further details, but we can certainly partake in some interesting exchanges. And we're also going to change the gold mine from an almost humane protocol to a profit protocol, which basically means we're increasing their efficiency and increasing the amount of time they have to work a week. In return, we're going to raise their money by $1 an hour. Look at that, you now get $8 an hour. Thank you, Lord Roger Wintham. This is basically our representative from the Queen, and he's given us a mission. Quite simply, build a dungeon, and then we can choose some options. You could get five new immigrants, $2,000, or we can extend our mandate time. When the mandate runs out, we simply lose the game if we haven't caused a revolution yet. So, we want as long a mandate as possible, because we don't want to start a revolution. We just want to stay here underneath the lovely protection of the Crown, staying loyal to them. They want a dungeon, we'll give them a dungeon. Because everyone's so ridiculously unemployed, Employed, they won't even move into the lovely bunk houses that are set up because guess what they can't afford them So I'm gonna drop one of these to stack them higher It adds in more families, but it means even broke people can live in them But really we should actually also be offering some better jobs or we'll demolish some slums and get in some cattle ranches There we go Lord Roger Wyndham is also very happy that we've built our dungeon So we'll extend our mandate by an extra 18 months. Wabam! We're up to six years and nine months remaining whilst we can still live here and be happy Oh, and of course this is Penultimo. He's He's kind of like our best friend slash a complete and utter idiot and he's given us a quest to decrease the unemployment rate to 7%. Sure, we'll do that. What is the current unemployment rate? Uh, currently 22 people are unemployed. Anyway, here you can see a lovely freighter has been sent over to this island over here and it's going to land and then he's going to run on over with his little truck and grab all of this gold. So he legs it in there, grabs 442 gold, hops on a boat, sails it right back and then just places it down at the docks. So there we go, we've got gold on the export. Lord Roger Wyndham has now given us yet another mission which is to build ranches. And of course we need to do this so that we can get our mandate time going. So naturally we just drop everything and try and build some ranch. Send them to the ranch! <laughs> That's what I do with all of my excess workers, don't you worry. And we've just completed our trade route of gold. And as you can see, there's the gold coming in there, plus $10,000. That's a lot more than any of our previous trade deals. We can also technically export to the smugglers. The only issue is, once they do pay a lot above the market rate, it does annoy the crown. There's one thing I don't ever want to do in life, it's to make the queen upset. So we are not doing that. We are staying true to the crown today, ladies and gentlemen. So basically, Penultimo has told us that something does not feel quite right, Governor. I have a powerful desire to call you El Presidente. Now, this is a bit of an issue because I don't want to be Presidente. I quite simply just want to be a regular, normal bloke, totally loyal to the crown, and so I'm not going to try and get the revolutionaries on side. We don't want I them on side. Say, and there we go, Lord Roger Winter we've done his little mission so we'll extend our mandate time even further and there we go we've managed to get the unemployment rate down to seven percent look at this the island like us 72 percent support if you can believe it goodness we are giving them too many rights and happiness yeah don't worry we can change that soon enough and of course the first thing we want on this island to really get the money rolling in is a lovely little coal mine well i say little this thing is absolutely bloody massive and this thing is going to bring in a ton of money we're now up to seven years ladies and gentlemen seven years we're never gonna leave the Queen behind. She needs us. Whilst we're over here, we might as well start producing some of the stuff we couldn't build elsewhere, like sugar. Lots and lots of lovely sugar. How else are we meant to have tasty tea? And of course, we can produce coffee, but we're not gonna do that because we're not heretical, horrible people who drink coffee instead of nice little leaf broth. Oh, apparently the Crown would like me to have a dungeon and then arrest one revolutionary tropican. Very well, I will accept. I need to find a singular revolutionary lying around. So, let's pick out random people walking along the countryside. You there, you're a priest. What about you? You're a revolutionary diehard. Okay, the moment you don't really like me that much. Well, you've got two kids, but I'm afraid you've got to be arrested. So, the police are going to leg it out of their dungeon 
and try and arrest this lady over here. Wyndham is very happy we've managed to arrest that evil revolutionary tropican. So, extend the mandate time. We're up to eight years mandate time. Very good. <laughs> we've just detained... Oh, they were actually the faction leader. They were the faction leader of the revolutionaries. Anyway, the pirates now have 6,600 raid points, which means we can finally do the heist of Brandenburg Gate. I think it's worthwhile. So, we'll send them off on this mission. Hopefully they can go steal Brandenburg Gate for us. Oh, and also, here's our lovely little pirate ship, which is sailed out from the Smuggler's Cove. They're off to go steal the Brandenburg Gate. Come on. Away you go, pirates. Good luck. I love that you can just see them sail off the bloody map. Good stuff. And also, I think we could really do with some more gold. So, another gold mine. We need it. Come on. This is honestly one of my favourite games. And the main reason is each and every individual person, you can see them. You can see where they go, you can see where they live. Their workplace is the Teamster's office, all the way back over there. And you can see that they live in a bunkhouse, which is located over here. The pirates are currently dealing with the Burgermeister of Brandenburg. Apparently Berlin is a hundred miles inland, and so we need some collaborators in the city to get the gate out of the town. Fortunately, the Burgermeister is one Bratwurst short of a Volksfest. We could send them 50 units of gold or spend $15,000. Gathering 50 units of gold isn't difficult. We can do that. There we go. We've got another gold mine up and running. And as you can see, the little workers are sailing in on their tiny little paddle fishing boats. Even though we've got tons of sharks in the water. Okay, let me just pause the game. We've got this bloke in a tiny paddle boat. Who are you? It's Lucas Diaz. Mate, what are you doing? There is genuinely a massive shark right here. Right here, my friend. Okay, you continue your little paddle. We can turn sugar from this island into rum. This seems like a great idea. Yes, I'm going to place down a rum distillery. Oh my goodness, the pirates are returning. The boat is here. Yes. Come on, have you brought the Brandenburg Gate back? Have you done it? Oh, I can't wait to see it. Come on. If we go over to World Wonders, there it is, the Brandenburg Gate. It costs 10,000. This means citizens cannot have die-hard political views anymore. Citizens will be more inclined to develop indifferent or moderate political views. Perfection. Brandenburg Gate. Enjoy your new home. So, here it is. We're flying it in by blimp and we've just landed it on. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? The Brandenburg Gate is ours. Is a massive statue of me, El Presidente, in front of the Brandenburg Gate. Look, everyone wants to visit it. This logging camp has been built, so that's nice. We can chop down some trees, but of course we're giving back because we don't have to deforest the entire world. I know. Who can believe it? I like trees. Apparently that prison architect logging video. Yeah, apparently I kind of like trees and appreciate their worth. So we're going to keep them around for a bit. And of course, whilst we cut the trees, we can also build a lumber mill. This is going to emit some pollution, but alas, as long as we build it away from the residential area, no one should worry. Oh my goodness, our mandate is up to um nine years. We're doing a very good job. We're making a lot of money. We've got 252 people. This is great. This is actually going amazing. Why do you ever want to go to anywhere that isn't this? We've also got our iron mine up and running. Oh, this is going great. So we've got two coal mines, two gold mines, and an iron mine. This is success. Oh, and our mandate's up to 10 years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, this is going well. What's this island like? What the hell is going on in there? <laughs> Why have we not noticed this? This island's got some kind of hidden Aztec temple of doom. Um, what have the other islands got? Have we got anything over here? We've got a couple of little boat wrecks. This is great. I love these maps. They're beautiful. You've got so many little hidden things. And I think it's probably time we build yet another gold mine here. So for that, of course, we'll need a Teamsters port and a landing. Oh, look, there's a ton of Aztec temples over here. Why have they all been charred? Hmm. I don't know why people would think building next to an active volcano is a bad idea. Because, I mean, we've been doing it for certainly about 10 years now. And we've had no issues whatsoever. And we've got our mandate up to 11 years. Good lord. Oh, El Presidente might die of old age before this mandate runs out. We might as well move to a different island. We really should. Yes, why not? Here we go. we got loads of boats sailing on over, and we're about to get started on the wonderful construction empire, which is going to be plantation land. I have no idea what else to do with this land. Wait, hang on a second. Apparently there's a child in here. David Diaz is a child who's currently poor, uneducated, and enjoying time in the tavern. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. My goodness, we've really turned this game into something else. We've got 12 years of mandate left, 493 population, loads of money in the bank. What even is the point of progressing in this game? I'm having a wonderful time. We've expanded onto all of these islands. We've got our new tannery set up. This is going great. We've got another port and everything. The game is working at perfect capacity in my opinion. How are we doing for unemployment? 15 unemployed, free vacant jobs. Well, I'm sure we can fix that. With a good old fashioned brand new gold mine. Well, we're at 500 population. This is five times the amount we started with. 
Things are going good. <laughs> Things are going very well. Everything is working perfectly. Perfectly fine. Don't you worry. Now something I've discovered is that most of this island is perfect for sugar. So we're going to bang down quite a few more sugar plantations and hopefully we're going to start producing even more rum. Oh my goodness, what have we done to you, game? What have we done? I feel like it's an improvement. Maybe this was how the game was meant to be played, but alas, you just never really know with these things, do you? Similar to the Prison Architect video, if you have another recommendation for a game where I can go completely off the rails and turn the world into something that is an improvement, I would say, I'd say this is an improvement. This is very good. Look at how beautiful our wonderful world is. It's absolutely perfect. Please do give me a shout and you know what, we, we can go about and make this it's one nice for monstrosity. Choice. Okay, we've got a 14 years worth of mandate now. It's actually surprisingly easy. I thought it would be more difficult than this. One of the edicts we can do is start a penal colony. This increases immigration rate by 50%. However, there's a, there's a very high chance that everyone's going to be a criminal. But don't worry, I've got a way around this. So we research penal colony, and then we can go to edicts and start penal colony. And lovely. So that means everyone coming in, there's a much higher chance that they're going to be a criminal. But don't worry, we've got these dungeons you see. What we can do with a dungeon is change them to convict labor. This means that we have a slightly worse efficiency, but each inmate generates $20 per month. Isn't that wonderful? That is just downright phenomenal. I feel like this island has almost been completely built up on, so is this one. We might as well move to the super large one. It has all of the mines on it that I really like the look of. Yes. Let us see if we can get this place set up. Now we have managed to choose the one place on the island where there is absolutely no mines whatsoever. But very well, we'll keep it how it is. We want to build this up and then we'll see where we can take it. What I'd be interested to know is can we build tobacco here? We can. We can have tobacco plantations. Finally. And apparently our penal colony has reached level 1. We've got a level 1 penal colony. So now this means that we get an increased monthly immigration rate. We're up to 55%. And our monthly payment is raised to 150. Look, we've got 600 people living on our islands now. This is great. Look at all these tiny little boats of our citizens paddling around, trying to dodge all of the sharks in the water. My goodness, there's so many of them. There's tons of them. Well, we really are getting a lot of money. Apparently the Crown would now also like us to level up our penal colony mandate, even though we've just got it to level 2. Very good. This is going to give us an extended mandate of 36 months, well, apparently. And apparently that just fires immediately. So that's 36 months of mandate. 18 years of mandate, ladies and gentlemen. Our penal colony is now completely maxed. We have a 60% immigration rate increase and we get 300 in monthly payment. Not bad at all. My god. Penal colony, it's the way to go, ladies and gents. How are we doing for workers? Free unemployed, one vacant job. My god, we're doing well. well. There are apparently 107 homeless families. Oh my goodness, and we're getting close to 1,000 population, ladies and gentlemen. We've got 200,000 almost in the bank. This has gone great. This really has. The crown is willing to pay so much money for some of these things. There we go. Now that we've got our new dungeon, we want to, of course, set it to convict labor. Go find those criminals and get them working in the mines. Population just keeps on ticking up. How's the happiness doing? General happiness, 35. Great. Apparently people are a little grumpy about the fact that we have no healthcare. And 10 people have died in the last 12 months from pretty horrific healthcare. That's all good to me. There we have it. Each and every single possible mine on the map that we could occupy is now ours. Time to start with the deforestation and logging. And there we have it, we've hit a thousand people, we've got 300,000 in money, the volcano has seemingly not erupted yet, and I think we're doing great, doing absolutely great. We've got tons of gold mines, loads of coal mines, but equally, even though our gold mines, they are limited in supply, the amount of resources we're just producing, we will be fine. We don't need the gold in our life, we're making a ton of money anyway. You know what, I'm gonna modify the castle a bit. There we go, oh look at our lovely new palace, beautiful. So improved. 10 out of 10. Yes, I'm pretty certain I've done everything I can. This is wonderful. We've got a, we've got a huge set of islands going around. They look huge. We've got 1,000 people living in our tiny little colony. We've got over 500,000 in money. My god, this is incredible. Our foreign relations are through the roof. The crown loves us 100% in fact. As you can see, our revenue and expenses are just amazing. We've got so much money going on. I think this is perfect. I think we have peaked, ladies and gentlemen. We've completely and utterly 
utterly peaked. So today we have just proven that basically you don't need to leave the colonial era in Tropico 6. In fact, you'll probably benefit from not doing so. So there we go. 20 years of mandate we've got lying around. We can be here forever. An endless stream of free money, battling revolutionaries and just ignoring them. Anyway, if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, make sure to give the video a like and do consider subscribing to join the community. It would be absolutely lovely to have you with us on our adventure as our community grows more and more. Honestly, it's a wild time to be involved. If you want to see more Tropico and if you have an idea for what you'd like to see in Tropico, then make sure to give me a shout. And of course, a special thank you to all of my majestic patrons. These lovely little sausages fund these silly videos. And thank you very much, each and every one of you. Especially you, Akona. Who knows why you're donating that much money, but you're doing a lovely thing. And if you want to watch a video, then I strongly recommend this one on screen now. Anyway, I'll see all of you in the next one. Have a lovely day.